Hello everyone and welcome to my Craig the Mad Bummer guide. It's going to give you everything you need to know about Craig, the pairings, artifacts, skills and a couple of the different talent pages that you're going to be able to use on the open field and PvE. So stay tuned for my guide. So yes, we're going to be covering Craig the Mad Bummer today. Personally, one of my, if not the my favourite epic hero out of all the epic heroes that you can pick from just because i think he honestly is one of the most coolest heroes in the game plus for pvp and an archer player he is a phenomenal hero so let's go over today's video we're gonna go over all of his skills pairings artifacts and talents like always and give you guys that up-to-date experience on what we know about craig and give you guys a little bit more of an insight when it comes to what talents and pairings you're gonna be. So if you enjoyed my video, smash the like, comment, and subscribe for more daily Call of Dragons content. And with all that said, let's move on into the video. So Craig is a phenomenal archer hero. He does get access to marksman, engineering, and mobility trees. And his four skills he gets are honestly really, really powerful, apart from one skill which we obviously will discuss. His first skill is an AoE, and that is correct, an AoE effect for an archer march. For the first time out of all of the other marches, if you check every other, even legendary marches currently, they all have some sort of single target DPS. But when we look at Craig Boy here, he deals 800 damage to a, t uh, a single target and an additional two nearby legions and that those two nearby legions are gaining an additional 300 damage because of the aoe so you're hitting for 800 on one guy and then another 300 on another two guys and that's 600 damage altogether if you add all that up and then with 608 we're already on 1400 damage skill factor and when we add the last bit in, all targets that have taken any of this physical damage also gain a bleed effect, which is 200 damage every second for three seconds. So again, 600 damage dealt here. Oh, absolutely bonkers when you think about of the amount of damage you're going to be dealing out with Craig as a PvP AoE max match, which is really, really powerful for him. And the cool thing with Craig, with uh, compared to a lot of other heroes, he has what we call one of the best setups for skilling. So obviously we always f skill up this first skill. But when we go to his second skill, we should always max this second. So we have a 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one hero. And that's because we're gaining that 10 percent extra hero skill damage and after we finish battle maybe we've killed someone and we've done our successful flank for example we get a 20 percent march speed bonus allowing us to escape from battle really easily whenever we are going in and out and on top of this the third skill is a really powerful skill again we're going to get 10 percent attack on any of our marksman units but if you are using the wilderberg unit you're going to be able to get additional 10% defense because the Wilderberg do have access to a flying Wyvern Rider, which is a flying marksman unit. So you're going to gain in total 10% attack and 10% 10, uh, 10 defense when you rock those units. So you can see these three stats are very, very key. And this is where all of the power in Craig starts in the beginning. But he is a very good hero in the early game because of his three skills, as you can see. His fourth skill is only to do with engineering. And again, we will use Craig sometimes if you're not at war with maybe your order to give him that bit of an extra boost in engineering and building flags. It's just a nice little bit of quality of life. It helps the alliance out, you know, building flags. Nothing too crazy when we're talking about it but when we do awaken his skill it does increase the damage as you can see so originally the damage is 603 but when you do awaken him it goes to the skill one as i stated before so you can see there's a massive difference between a non-awakened craig and an awakened craig and that is the big power difference and what we're going to talk about right now with craig so when you've got Craig in the first start, you always try and keep him three stars to keep him, him, you know, maxing these three skills. Always go five on the first skill, like always. And then it's up to you how quick you can max these guys out 
but I would go to two stars to max this second and then go to three stars and max this third as my advice for you guys. And then once you hit the level four eight, you're gonna be able to start pushing, obviously to finishing him off to expertise him. And the cool thing is, as you can notice, the expertise is very powerful because originally you're only gonna be dealing that 600 damage factor and an additional 300 to up to two nearby targets. But with this additional awakening now, you're dealing an additional 200 damage already on that skill factor plus you're also getting that bleed effect that we mentioned, which is an additional 600 damage factor. So absolutely bonkers when you put it into perspective of how much this is actually dealing when you're thinking of all the raw numbers on PvP. So his skills, as you can notice, are very, very good for PvP. You can also use him in other scenarios, which we will talk about right now with the pairings. But in the PvP scenario, I would always like to pair Craig with someone like Nico or even Kanara if you've got access to your Kanara. Because obviously Kanara is going to be an excellent PvP hero in that first season that you're going to have access to all of these heroes. But the cool thing is later on with Craig, you're going to get access to Frega, which is an additional marksman which has now the flying subtype attached to her. So you can now use a Fragar and a Craig March as a dedicated flying march to hopefully ward off and kill those pesky flying mages that we all love to see and use in the open field. So that's a really good combo that you can use for all PvP scenarios. Another one is going to be your one win with the Craig. This is going to be more set up for super budget if you don't have access to a 5 one 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 Nico or Kanara, for example. You're going to be using your Guan win again if as long as she's 5155 five, five, or 5115. One, again, you're going to get a load of damage out of her. And when she's awakened again, this is going to give you a massive DPS increase when you're talking about a raid pairing so if you're looking for something for behemoth raids for craig and you love craig like i do you can rock craig with your guan win and this is gonna obviously be a super budget but if you're gonna look for a upgrade nico and craig if you're still rocking craig that is for raids is still a viable option you're gonna enjoy it when you're there but my main purpose for Craig and where I see him used mainly is always going to be PvP. This hero in PvP, as I've already mentioned, with his skills and the pairings is terrifying. And the fact that a arch march gains access to AoE does allow for some very interesting talent choices. So we're going to go into the artifacts now. And once we finish up the artifacts, we will move on to your different talent pages. So with the artifacts we do have at the moment Heart of Kamasi attached to him, this could be potentially one of the most powerful artifacts in the future that you could be attaching to maybe your Craig or a different marksman. And the reason why is this is a supportive artifact that's going to empower your main marchers. So if you were running, for example, some sort of... Um, Nico and Hosk and maybe a Kanara and Frega combo you can maybe run just as a support you know Guanwin with this Craig or Craig with Guanwin depending on how you want to run it and then have the Heart of Kamasi attached to them because that means your two primary marches are going to be using two of the other artifacts that I'm going to state in a moment and then this march is going to be giving your two primary marches 18% extra attack and 18% extra normal attack damage, which is insane. This is only level two for me. You're gonna go all the way up to 30% worth of extra stats for 10 seconds. When you do have this, so this is something to consider in the future for a supportive artifact for archers. But we'll start down at the bottom. We're gonna rock Bomb Flinger if you're gonna be using any sort of raid epic artifact this is the best for raiding with epics because you're dealing in a nice amount of damage 2400 which is an absurd amount compared to some of the legendaries which we'll go over in a moment even heart piercer again a really good artifact if you have this skilled up or leveled up compared to your bomb flinger and obviously it uses this it does more damage and you have a chance of defense break which might help you deal a little bit more damage in the open field 
But when you start to go up in the ladder, the top three choices at the moment is going to be Viola's bow. This is one of the top three for the absolute amazing damage targets, a sealed effect that basically allows you to stop any PvP march from using their artifact for up to 10 seconds. A very, very powerful effect to stop even those pesky cavalry from blinking onto you or maybe even a infantry from shielding but a really powerful one again which is almost the jack of all trades that we all love to see and know now is going to be your shadow blaze this does an amazing 3600 to five in different targets and it gives you an, a massive amount of maximum attack so if you're trying to go super aggressive this is the way to hit as much as possible as hard as possible as well and then what you can do also if you're trying to be um, a little bit more i say newer and a bit more creative rattle spear is going to be more of a jack of all trades artifact the real powerful thing with this artifact is the chance you're able to change the direction or who you're hitting each time that it fires so you get three fires and at the moment it does 1200 damage at level one but obviously this is going to scale up with the more levels you have and in a raid this is insane right this is dealing almost 3600 damage almost the same as a max shadow games is to that behemoth and whenever you have a some sort of defense break you're going to gain an extra 10 percent defense penetration to hit even harder this skill uh, is really powerful in PvP too. Again, if you break someone's defense break in the PvP scenario, this is going to absolutely shred them. So I honestly think this might become one of the best artifacts that you can use right now for your Archer March. And the reason is, as you've not noticed from my explanation, it is so good at being versatile and flexible meaning we can use it in pvp and we can use it in the raids and get maximum benefit generally out of this artifact so i really do like it and that is the final suggestion for me for now with the current artifacts that we have in the game so now we're going to go over all the talents for the craig mad bomber i hope you've enjoyed the video so far we've gone over all of his skills pairings and artifacts and generally my thoughts and impressions on him so far so i hope you've enjoyed the video smash a like comment and subscribe if you made it this far all the way through to the midpoint but now we're going to go into the talent section where we have a load of fun with our craig and his beautiful little wyvern hello so yes we're at the talent pages and i've got two main pages to show you and the third one is what we currently are testing on him and we're testing on frega to see what little differences in the builds that are gonna be in there if it's any beneficial or not so when we go in the first build this is gonna be the build that i suggest that you should always build on your craig especially if you're building him for pvp use because you're gonna try and abuse his capabilities as an AOE rage build uh, commander. So what we're going to do is go down the marksman tree here and then finish it off with the mobility tree as we will show in a moment. So when we go into this marksman tree, you can see where my current path is and we will obviously showcase at the end, we will be taking burst shot. The reason why we go these exact talents is pretty simple. We don't um, care about normal attack damage with this build. We always care about trying to do as much damage with our rage cycling and rage abilities. So what we're going to do is get high spirit and intimidation for that reason. Getting that skill damage and rage generation. And then using shower of blow. So when we do cast our rage skill, there's a 50% chance that our Craig is going to do 8% more damage and if that's more damage on our aoe and the bleeds more importantly then it could re result in a kill and the reason why this is important is for the payoff which you're going to see in a moment we do go for that marks on hp and delight combo and if you like me and you're trying to be as aggressive and trying to get as much out of this march as you can Harvest is honestly a really, really powerful skill with Craig. And the reason is every time your Legion defeats an enemy Legion, their attack increases by 
2.5% up to 5. Meaning, after two kills, we're going to get a 5% increase during battle. And the cool thing is, as you can see where we're talking about now, if we are firing AoE damage off and any of those random units that are dying to the bleed effects gets killed by an alliance member, well, we get credited with that defeat too. And because we get credited with that defeat, it's going to trigger harvest, allowing our march to get some free damage while it's focusing down, obviously, the main culprit. The cool thing is, if you kill the main culprit as well, and in between, you might kill one more, that's a 5% increase once this is done, and you're going to be able to have that 5% increase on the next fight, as long as you do not drop your battle, right? So very, very powerful talent for Craig, and I think this is one of the best heroes in the physical area that can actually use Harvest very, very well. What we're going to do is finish off with burst shot. Like we said, we're going to try and maximize on our physical damage to try and finish off and kill those units with our rage cycling. It's going to fill the gap, you know, when we're not firing off our rage skill. So it should hopefully add a little bit more extra damage, like a little bit of a bleed effect. So from here, you will go down the march speed build. And the march speed build for me is straight down the middle and this is so our marksman actually can move and if we do get slowed by anyone we're going to be hopefully able to still escape because we're going to have a massive amount of march speed which you're going to see in a moment but we will go down the main area here finishing off the build and getting preemptive preparations because we want to try and get into fight kill someone and get out as quickly as possible and this is giving us as much attack in order to do so and if obviously we kill people with harvest this is going to again increase even better now because we're stacking attack on attack triggers with this build i would finally finish off with intimidation just to give yourself almost that extra one percent hero skill damage to finish off your rage cycling build and that would be for your craig but a more fun build, and I honestly find this a lot more fun to use, but it's nowhere near as effective in a open field PvP scenario, is the Mac speed build. Yes, we have a complete Mac speed build. And the reason why is when you have Craig, and we didn't really mention her in the pairing section, but if you did, for some reason, pair, um, pair your Craig with, for, some, for example, Fear, Fear does give a large amount of march speed, and so does your Craig. And if you pair these two together or with this build, and you obviously can use this build out of sight, what this tailors for is trying to get as much march speed and abuse of that march speed as we can. So our main skill always gives us 5% march speed, and what we do here is giving ourselves another over 20% worth of march speed, and then the a little bit of attack to help, with our little attack to burst. But we also now, whenever we cast a rage skull, gonna be gaining another 15% rage. And the reason why we have this is to, for example, use this build to take advantage of the movement speed to get around enemy lines and maybe start farm killing or killing the units that are really far away and might be reinforcing from a long distance, right? So you can pick off a lot of stragglers with this. And if you fire off that skill, you're always going to be able to escape. So it's a really, really powerful hit and miss, basically, tactic when you are using this fight. A really good one, again, is hasty march we're going to increase our march speed by another further five percent and then overall our attack by one but a real cool payoff with this combination and why this is called max speed is when you finally finish this out whenever our legion gets interrupted and this could be by our um infantry units it could be cavalry it could be any sort of units instead of being intercepted our unit reduces that movement speed debuff by a hundred percent meaning we do not get slowed that is right we are staying sonic the hedgehog with our craig the mad bomber in this build and trying to maximize as fast speed as possible when you finish this build i would go victory rush to add that little bit of damage of what we were stating earlier and again this build's made for hit and miss tactics so you can try and kill as many stragglers as you can and run away while using the march speed to your advantage when we've completed this skill 
opposite stage on the talent page, what we will do is go back into that marksman tree and we will finish off the build as the same as the other rage build. We will go down the marksman, rage and skill damage, giving ourselves shower of blows and also putting ourselves one point into magic counter tactics in case we do find some random magic units that we can take advantage of with our flying capabilities and then kill them right so that is a really powerful flanking movement speed mobility tree for craig a really really fun tree to use while this tree on the other hand is more for pvp general use you can use this tree what i've got on screen as well as the opposite tree but the difference is, if you've noticed from the rage build that we spoke about first, compared to the testing tree that's on screen now, is the difference of this bullseye. We're just going to see if bullseye is going to be worth it anymore. And in this build, we're going to see if counterattack damage is going to help Craig any further. But so far from what we've been testing, Harvest has been the better route. And in my opinion, bullseye, it doesn't feel like it is doing too much for our guy so that's why we're going to stick with shower of blows from this testing that we've done in this page here of this season so if you look for two builds this is your damage build and once you complete your damage build with burst shot you will follow the mobility tree here and go down and finish off with your last point intimidation but if you're choosing to go down the mobility tree then this is the tree you're going to want and then you're going to finish off with Victory Rush, giving yourself that 50% extra damage against those units that you're trying to kill really, really quickly and take advantage of with this flank and hit and run tactic. So that is my video, guys, on Craig. It's been a while. We haven't done a lot of the epic heroes, I know. And I know you guys have been checking them out, so thank you for checking out the old guides. I know there have been problems with the audio, the quality, and all stuff. But the fact that you're willing to watch the old stuff and still support me is amazing. So here is, while we've been away, all the brand new updated guides on the epic heroes. Better quality, better information, as well as up-to-date information for you to enjoy it so if you enjoyed this video smash the like comment and subscribe but until the next one stay safe stay sneaky peace out